All right, let's go to our playlist for today. It's on our Spotify already as a public uh, playlist. It's called Tuesday Middle Yoga, 5-12-2020. And we're gonna start the first song in three, two, and play. Go ahead and make it, um, take it off shuffle and put the playlist itself on repeat. All right. Looks good. Taking that seat, I'm gonna sit on my blanket because it's a little more comfortable. And we have our strap ready as well. Oh, happy Tuesday. Let's start with our strap. Go ahead and move your props out of the way other than that. Make it a lot wider than your shoulders. Let's start as wide as you'd like. I'm gonna make it the widest for me. Yeah, even wider than that. Let's take a big inhale to stay. Exhale, arms come down in front of you. Inhale, lift. Exhale, behind you. It's okay if your elbows bend here, especially right when we start. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, in front. Continue this pattern back and forth. Inhaling to lift, exhaling to lower. Go at your own pace. And today's class will all be about prepping for half moon. And I know we've done this pose a few times in the last um, week or two in class, but I thought it's a great opportunity to kind of build on a pose because it's so rare that I'll like take one pose and build it week to week to week, um, just because I like to do things that are different every week. But if we're working towards a pose together, maybe we'll all get it and feel really good about it. So everything we do today, or most things we do today, will be revolve, um, will be focused on getting into that half moon and maybe finding a good balance at the end of class. Let's do one more back or front and the other way. Let's all meet with the strap to the side. We're gonna use it in a moment. Rest your hands on your shoulder or on your knees. Take a deep breath in. Exhale through the nose. Seated and starting that ujjayi breath, making that sound of the back of the throat. Gentle noise, sounds like, maybe it sounds like the ocean to you, sounds a little bit like white noise. You're just dragging your breath along the throat as you inhale and exhale through the nose. Gently open the eyes. Let's start with some long pose. So let's take the right foot, bring it on top of that left knee. And here's where you can bring in your props. There's two ways you can bring in props here. You can take your blanket. You can, if you're not sitting on it, you can bring it underneath that left knee and take another prop and bring it between, see for me, it doesn't even reach it yet. Bring it between that um, right knee and the left foot. If it doesn't reach down on the block, you can actually make that block even taller. This can be your log pose, and that's totally fine. That's kind of where I'm at today, honestly. This seemed even like a little too much. Maybe I'll bring the block to the medium height. We're gonna bring that left hand to left side. Inhale, right arm over. Bring that right hand down and bring it on top of that right knee. You might even walk that left hand further away diagonally and back from the right knee. So you can kind of get a nice grip on the inner right knee and gently push it away from you, really gently. Shouldn't feel like pain. Should just be like a nice hip opener. Nice, let's come back up. Let's switch sides. And maybe when you take the blocks away, you feel it come down a lot more. Switching sides. I'm going to do the same thing for that side just to make it even. Left foot on top of the right knee. 
and left knee on top of the right foot. Nice, flex that top left foot. We're bringing that right hand diagonally to the right and behind you a little bit. Inhale, left arm over left ear. Lower the left hand down, gently press on the inner left knee and just gently pushing that knee down and away. Shouldn't feel like pain, should feel like a nice deep hip opener. Take a couple more breaths. And nice job, slowly come up. If you have the blocks, release them, see if it, if it helped you at all. Maybe it helps your knees come down a little further for your log pose. Nice job. From here, we're coming down onto our backs. So if you have the blanket underneath you, move it to the side. You will need one of your props if you have the block. From here, we need the strap as well. So get the strap handy. We're gonna bend the left knee towards the sky, lift up that right foot to the sky, and wrap the strap around the right foot. Strap comes into the right hand, and we open up the hip and let the leg fall to the right. I'm letting my leg fall into a block. Left arm opens up to left side. You can let that left leg lay flat. It's a deeper pose. You can rest your left palm on top of that left thigh, left hip. You can flex the right toes and press the foot into the strap for a less passive stretch here. You can bring a little bit of a neck opener into this by lifting the head and looking all the way to the left. Take three more breaths. Nice job. Let's bring the foot up to the sky. Keep the strap. Strap in both hands and just draw the foot down towards you. Maybe little tiny pulses. You could also bend that left knee here. And let's go ahead and switch sides. Left foot up. Move your prop to the left side of your mat. Strap in the left hand. Open up left foot to left side. You can straighten that right leg if you'd like. And you can pick up the head, look all the way to the right and lower your head down. You can anchor that right hip down using your right hand. Close the eyes, breathe. Press the left foot into the strap. So today, since we're working toward a solid half moon pose, Ardha Chandrasana, we're going to open up the hips, we're going to open up the shoulders like we started doing at the very beginning. And we're going to practice um, standing poses a lot that have, you know, some kind of side aspect to them. Lift the foot up to the sky, both hands holding onto the strap. Flex the foot and slowly draw the leg toward you using both hands, maybe little pulses. Two more breaths. Nice. Strap to the side. I don't think we'll need it again, but keep it not too far just in case. Arms are gonna go out to the sides, fist down. So put your thumbs up in the air so you know that the right part of the fist is on the floor. You don't have to keep your thumbs up. Bend your knees and lift up your feet so your knees are directly above the hips. You can flex the feet, you can point them whenever you like. And let the hips drop to the right, knees drop to the right. Keep both fists on the floor. Lift the knees up, glued together, let the hips fall to the left. Again, lift the knees. Try to keep the knees not too close to the chest. So try not to draw them in as you come down and lift up. That way you're using more of your core. Dropping side to side at your own pace. Try not to go too fast. 
press the fist down into the floor as you do this back and forth. Knees stay together. Let's do it twice more. One more, nice. From here, knees lift up. Keep your toes together, knees open up. We're gonna bring our hands interlaced behind our head and do 20 crunches. Go ahead, go at your own pace. Take little tiny movements. If you use more, more momentum, it's gonna look more like this, but let's not use momentum here. Let's use completely just ab work. Using the strength of your abdominal muscles, slow, little crunches. Go ahead, finish your 20, take another moment. Nice. Go ahead, draw your knees together. Start to rock forward and back gently if that feels good for you. And meet feet in front of you. From here, our arms reach back behind us, elbows pointing behind us, fingertips pointing forward. Feet on the floor, knees up. Walk the hands a little bit further back. Then we're going to start to bend the elbows and press up. Lean back, press. So we're getting a nice stretch across the shoulders, but you're actively pressing down as you come down and press up in the triceps. So keep going. Maybe start to move, move to the music. Keep pressing down. Maybe you start to feel a little bit of burning sensation in the triceps. I got to hear my, my cat snoring so loud right now the cutest thing. Let's do this for a few more counts. And stop. Walk the hands a little bit closer, but keep the fingertips pointing forward. Feet press down, and we lift the hips. Reverse tabletop. Now as we gently bend the elbows and lower the hips, then we're going to press back up, straighten the arms. You can always keep a gentle bend in the arms as you come all the way up. Come down, bend. Exhale, push. Inhale. Exhale. Let's do five more. And lower for one, two, three, four. Nice job. One more. I know your arms are burning. Hold it for three. Lift higher, two. And one, lower the hips. Whew. Jelly arms lean forward. Just grab the elbows. Take a couple breaths. Nice, swing the feet around. Let's come into tabletop pose. On your hands and knees. Now, you're going to do some modified side planks, and I mean very modified, so don't get too nervous. Let's kick out the right foot behind us. Drop the heel to the left. And then we're going to let that left foot come down and swing to the left of our mat. And now it's behind us since our chest is open to the right side of the room. So we're in a very modified side angle. Toes are pointing to the right side of our room. Arm is open, reaching up. We're going to lower the hand down, reach underneath the left arm. Inhale, reach the arm up. Exhale, reach it under. Inhale, reach. Exhale. Do a few more of these. And one more, reaching up to stay. You know, maybe it's just me, but this feels like a little bit of workout, even though it's modified. My left arm is still working here. Nice. Let's come down, tabletop. I'm going to swing my body around so you can see me better. But we're doing the other side. So left foot kicks back. Lower the heel to the right. And kickstand the right foot behind you, which is actually to the right side of your mat. Left arm reaches up. 
opening the chest. Let the hand drop down, reaching under the right and lift the left arm up. Dip it down and reach. Keep going at your own pace. Really opening that left shoulder as you reach up. Let's do two more. And stay lifted. Press and lift. Really press into that right hand. Start to look up. Let's come down to tabletop. Hands and knees pose. <sighs> coming into a plank pose. I'm sure you saw this one coming since we did those modified side planks. We're going to bring the feet together. Big toes touch. Heels drop to the left. Stacking the feet. Lifting the right arm up. You don't have to stack the feet. You can let one of the, uh, the uh, top right foot come in front of the left foot. The stacking is a little more difficult. Let's see if you can lower the hand down underneath and inhale to reach. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. And three, two, and one right into the other side, plank pose. I'm switching around so you can see. Big toes touch, heels drop to the right, left arm reaches up. Drop the arm underneath the right arm and it reaches up. Drop it, inhale, reach. And five, four, three, two, and one. Nice job, plank, downward facing dog. <sighs> I'm gonna turn around again. From downward dog, just pedal out the heels a couple times. <sighs> find some movement, find your breath if you've forgotten it. Find some stillness now. Press down into the hands. Shake the head no a couple times. Bring the left foot to the center of the mat. Inhale the right leg. And open the hip. Flex the foot. Draw the knee to nose. Inhale, lift the right, open the hip. Knee to nose. Inhale, lift the right, open the hip. One more time, knee to nose. Inhale, lift the right, open the hip. Nice, draw the knee forward. Foot between the hands, let's lower the left knee down. You can always use your blanket here, especially if you have history of knee injuries. Really nice to be extra careful with your knee. In this lunge, let's swing the arms up. Bring the hands to hip if you'd like, maybe start to look up. Take a breath. Let's bring the hands down next to your right foot and swing the hips back, lifting the right toes, hamstring stretch. Take two more breaths to stay here. Nice. Let's step it back, come into downward facing. From here, right foot steps in the middle, right into the other side, left leg swings up. Open the hip, exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, left leg lifts, open the hip. Exhale. Inhale, open hip. Exhale. Let's do one more, inhale, open hip. Knee to nose, step it through. Lower the right knee down. Swing the arms up. Hands can come to hips. You can look up. Little back bend. Hands can lower down, fingertips the floor. With an inhale, swing the hips back, left toes flip up. Take a few more breaths to stay. And come back and step it back, downward facing. 
I'm gonna move this out of the way for now, my blanket. Let's swing the right leg up and step it through. Coming into warrior two, so lower that left heel, swing the arms up. Nice strong arms. Let's stay here and wait a few breaths. No need to move directly out of this pose yet. Maybe you find a deeper base, pushing that left foot a little further back or right toes start to inch forward. Deep in this pose as much as you'd like. Arms are strong, check your back left arm. Look down your right arm. High to low, so hands come down to step it back and come to downward facing. Left leg lifts up, steps through, warrior two. Right heel lowers, swing the arms up. Sometimes it's really nice to go back to the basics. Just kind of remember the core poses and really get comfortable with them. Again, you can find a deeper base here. Arms are strong. Moment of stillness, looking forward. Breathe. Nice job, high to low, hands down, step back, downward dog. <sighs> if you're really into doing the full vinyasa between, be my guest, but I'm not teaching that today. I find that it can be a little taxing on the shoulders. <clears throat> There's no really need to do that every single time. Let's lift up that right leg up, step it through. Lower that left heel down. Let's come back into warrior two. And this time we're reversing. So let's come back to warrior two and just focus on how we come into this reverse. Bring your left hand to your left hip. Now pretend that there's a lot of space between that left rib, that lower rib, and that left hip. And pretend that instead of having them come closer together like I just did, you're gonna have them separate and then lift and bend. So imagine that there's something right at your left hip and it's between the rib and the hip and it can't touch the lower rib. So lift up and then back in your reverse warrior getting length before bend. Nice high to low, downward dog, step it back, left leg lifts, other side, step it through. Right heel lowers, swing up warrior two. Lifting that back right rib up and then reversing. A little deeper in that left knee. Nice job. Come down, downward dog. Right leg lifts, step it through. Lower the left hip, uh, heel, warrior two pose. Start to straighten the right leg. We're coming into triangle pose. You can use your block next to your right foot or just lower the right hand down, left arm reaching up. Externally rotate that right shoulder, right elbow. Same thing with the left. Maybe look down at your right toes and then you start to look over to the left side of your room. Maybe all the way up to your left fingers and testing your balance. Nice job, let's come high to low. Bend the right knee, step it back. Downward dog, left leg lifts. Step it between the hands. Right heel lowers, warrior two. Straighten the left knee, coming down, triangle pose. Right arm lifts up. Externally rotating the shoulders. Perspective is down to the side or up. As you reach that right arm up, make sure you're making those fingertips feel alive and energized your energy flowing all the way from your fingertips to your toes. Nice job, look down, bend the left knee. Coming to downward facing, right, le uh, right leg lifts up, step it through, 
warrior two, as you probably guessed. But this time we're coming into side angle pose, right forearm to right thigh, left arm over left ear. Creating a lot of space between that left shoulder and left ear. Try not to lift up that shoulder close to the ear, lower it down, gluing it to your rib cage. If you'd like to take a bind, you can drop that right elbow in front of that right thigh and bind behind that right hip. You can also drop the hand to the floor. You can reach the arm up. You can use your core here and reach both arms up. And let's come down, downward facing. Left leg lifts right away. Step it through, warrior two. Again, side angle pose. Left forearm down, right arm up. You can modify as you'd like. Interlacing, left hand down to your left foot, and then bringing the right arm up, or using that core. Take a breath. Looking down, let's go back to downward facing. Let's take a moment, bring the knees down, Sit back for child's pose, take a breath, take a sip of water. Take a moment to catch your breath. And slowly come up. We're meeting at the front of our mat in a forward fold. Feet are about hips width distance apart. If you'd like to use your block here, you can. You can press your hands down into the block, rounding the spine, bending one knee at a time. Or really your hands can just come down as you bend the knees. Straightening one leg at a time. Now from here, we're building more and more towards that half moon. So we're gonna start with the left leg lower down and lift the right leg up. Now we're gonna point the toes toward the right side of our room. As you keep that right leg lifted, we're gonna pulse the heel in the air. Little pulses, up and down. Little pulses, not huge movements, contracting the glute. Lowering and lifting. Let's do this for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Lower the foot down. Let's take a rag doll, so make the feet nice and wide. Grab opposite elbows, the opposite hands, sway side to side. I hope this playlist is giving you a lot of energy for this. Nice, drop the hands, heel toe the feet, underneath the hips. Other side, so left leg lifts. Point the toes toward the left side of the room. And we're starting to pulse. Pulsing little movements up and down. Let's do 10 more. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Lower it down. Nice job. Let's make the feet wider and point the feet away. Heels a little closer together than the feet. Drop down from the loss in a squat pose. If you'd like to take your crow here, you can. That's totally optional. Because we're not really using our arms that much for this practice. So if you, you'd like to use your arms a little more, feel free. Stay here, take three more breaths. 
You can also open up the arms, fingertips down on either side of your mat. I never want to leave this pose. It's so comfy right now. All right. We do have to leave the pose, so let's come down. Lift the hips, come all the way to stand. Whew. So from here, we're gonna start doing the core practice. Sorry, the cat hair in my mouth, classic. So find a wall, we're all gonna find a wall. I'm going to point my computer a little more towards my wall so you can see me better. Same thing with my Instagram. All right. So find your wall. We're only gonna use this for a moment. You don't have to like change your whole setup. We're just using the wall for just a few moments. So from the wall, it's also nice to have your block. Maybe grab your block substitute. Wait for you to grab it. Go ahead. So from here, we're gonna we're gonna use the wall as and you might remember this from when we talked about half moon before. And I'll just do half moon in the middle just to show you. It should feel like and almost look like you're pressing your foot into a wall behind you as you do half moon. So what we're gonna do today is actually put a wall behind you. Let's start with the left foot. So the right foot will come about a little more than arm's distance away. Let's take a good six inches and kind of play with it, see if that works for you. So your right toes are pointing directly away from the wall bringing the block down in front of your toes and just swing your foot up, see if it touches. If it touches and it feels like you're jolting a little away from the wall too much, take a little baby step away from the wall and then just as you like. Yeah, that's perfect for me right there, I think. I could take a step closer, but I think this is comfier. Thanks. So our hand is down on the block. You could actually lean down on the floor if you're daring and the left arm reaches up. While our left foot is on the wall, the toes are pointing to, let's see, it's hard to describe. The toes are pointing in the same direction as our face as we look across the room, and we lift that left shoulder up. Externally rotating the shoulder. Now, this is a challenging pose. My right leg is already getting tired. I don't know about you. But another way to make it even more challenging is to take the hand off the block. Press into the floor of the right, press into the floor of the left, or the wall of the left. See if you can come here without your block at all. Whew. If you're on fire like me, let's go ahead and come down, lower that left leg, shake out the right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I love that. All right, other side. Switching feet. Find your stance. Toes pointing where you're looking, toward the side of the room. You lift up that right arm. You can always bend the standing knee. Doesn't have to be locked. It's actually better if it's a little bent because then you're actually using muscle strength instead of just leaning into the joint. Which isn't a bad thing, it just doesn't build strength. Let's go ahead and bring that left hand off the block. You're gonna feel your thighs working even more, especially this balancing left foot. Press into the wall, kicking with both feet. Let's stay for three. I know you can do this for two. And let's go down. Whew. Shake out that left leg. Oh, nice job, guys. I hope that felt good. I really love using the wall, especially for that pose. And for really any balance pose where you have like one limb, ex limb extended and you're kind of imagining that limb like pressing into something, that wall is perfect for practicing that. So let's go ahead and come into the full half moon without using the wall. Another thing you can do at home before we do that is you can do half moon with your back against the wall. Instead of your foot, it's your back. So that way you feel if your chest is totally open then you'll feel both shoulder blades pressing against the wall. Maybe after class you try that. I'm not gonna go into that right now. I don't have that much space. Let's start with, 
the right foot down since we started with that one against the wall. And we're just literally coming into half moon. Block down, left leg lifts. Make sure you have a nice base before you totally open up. Then we draw the left shoulder stacking it over the right. Left arm lifts. Left leg is energized. Again, pretending that wall is right behind us. And it's up to you if you want to see if you can play with balance. Releasing the right hand off the block. Maybe instead of that balance, you want to bend the left knee and reach back for that left foot. You can try balancing here too. I don't know if I'm going to get it today. We'll see a bit. Let's hold it for three for two, and lower down, Whew. other side, nice job. Left hand, left foot down, right arm reaches, right leg reaches, toes point to the side of the room. Feels kind of scary to look over to the right side. Maybe you can do it today. Open the chest. Try your balance. See if you can let go of that block. Nice. Let's see if we can grab the foot. See if you can bend the knee. Reach back. Maybe you try both at the same time. Nice job. Let's go ahead and lower down. Let's come into child's pose. <sighs> Sit back for child. You can have your knees open or together. Forehead comes down. Slowly move the hips side to side. Get a little deeper here. Two more deep breaths. Totally come up, tabletop. From here, we're gonna thread the needle. Bring the right hand to the center of the mat. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, left arm underneath. Shoulder comes to the floor. Left ear to the floor. Right elbow's lifting. You're pressing the right palm into the floor. Maybe you start to look up towards that right shoulder. Let's come out of it. Other side, left hand center, reaching the right. Exhale, arm comes down, shoulder to the floor. Left elbow is lifted. Maybe you start to look up towards that left shoulder. Two more breaths. Start to come up. Couple cat cows, inhale, dip the belly, look forward. Exhale, press and round. Inhale. Exhale. Couple more, inhale. And exhale. Swing the feet out in front of you. Come all the way down onto your backs. <sighs> My body always knows when it's almost time for Shavasana. I start yawning. Let's draw the knees in towards the chest. Extend the left leg down. And let the knee of the right side come to the left side of your mat. Arm reaches over to the right. Lying twist. Other side, knees in the chest. Extend the right down, knee over to the right side. And reach over to the left. And knees into chest. 
Give them a nice squeeze. Let's take a happy baby. Grabbing your feet, maybe rocking a little side to side. I think it's about time to find your final pose before Shavasana. That can be anything you'd like. Maybe you're really into the balancing today. You want to do something quick against the wall. Maybe a little handstand practice. Doesn't mean you have to do the full handstand perfectly. Maybe you just need to kick up a few times just to get a little blood rush to your head and remember how that feels, that inversion. Maybe do plow pose. Maybe go to the wall and just throw your legs up the wall. Take another moment to do whatever pose you'd like. And let's all start to meet down, laying on our backs. If you'd like to skip to the final song on the playlist, you can. I personally don't have trouble having Shavasana to some Metallica. Anything is really meditative if you let it be. Taking a deep breath in. Exhale to the mouth. Do two more just like that. Inhale. Hold it in. Big exhale to the mouth. One more inhale. And exhale. Staying and breathing. Bringing your focus to your heart. Bringing your focus to your chest. Down to your belly. Focus goes down your hips, your legs. <sighs> down your knees. Ankles to the toes. Noticing the temperature of your toes. Drawing your focus up the legs. Noticing the sensation of the floor underneath your legs and thighs. Focus goes up your torso, down each arm, to the elbow, down to the fingertips. Noticing the sensation of your arms laying on the floor. Focus goes up the arms, to the shoulders. by the ears. Go ahead, bend the elbows and take your fingers and just give yourself a little massage next to your eyes on your temples. Nice and slow, all at the same time, relaxing your jaw. Let's just now imagine, let's actually help our jaw relax. It'll bring your fingers, your index and middle finger down to the jawbone. Give yourself a little slow massage. And release the hands by your sides. Your focus goes all the way up to the crown of your head.
Take a deep breath in to stay. Exhale, big out through the mouth. Just noticing anything that's going on in your body, any sensation. Noticing just your body placed on the floor. And taking your time, let's all meet in an easy seated position. Place one hand over your heart. Let's place both hands over the heart, hands stacked. Close the eyes. And our final intention today, and no, I didn't have you set an intention for class because sometimes it is distracting, in my opinion, to always have an intention. But let's bring our focus to an intention that we can set now. As we've gathered our peace in this practice, <clears throat> we feel a little more grounded. Focus all of our energy to our heart. And together, let's just think about bringing love to people around us that need it the most, those that are sick, those that are suffering, those that have lost, those that just need a friend. Let's take a breath in together and give them that love, exhale, release. The light and dark in me loves and honors the light and dark in you. Together we say, Namaste. Thank you so much for coming today. Oh, hope your heart feels really open from all of those um, half moon poses. <clears throat> Maybe you want to take a moment after this to go against the wall and see how it feels with your back against the wall opening up for half moon pose. See if the wall helps you in that way. Ah. I'll just kind of reiterate some of the announcements that I, thank you, that I talked about before class. If you would like to donate and you can, you can donate the suggested donation, $6.66 or whatever you would like to, to Black Widow Yoga on um, Venmo, one word, no spaces, or Tina at blackwidowyoga.com. Um, 